It's so 2016 to say that the ketogenic diet reduces food cravings. Now we're evolving. Now we're looking at how it can actually be used to potentially modulate, well, alcohol cravings. This is some wild brand new research that just came out April 2021. First off, an earlier study that was published in the journal Nutrients. Okay, it demonstrated that four months of a ketogenic diet dramatically improved not only hunger cravings, but also alcohol cravings. They kind of just chalked that up and they're just like, okay, this is interesting stuff. It probably just has something to do with a hunger response. Because as with any kind of craving, a lot of it can translate into dopamine signaling, right? We can end up craving food because we're craving something else. Or we can end up craving food because we're so used to scrolling our phones and having this instant gratification that we're getting dopamine surges. If consuming alcohol is already ingrained in, I don't want to say your DNA, but I mean that like kind of in a colloquial way, like ingrained just in your daily life, it could definitely translate into you just wanting to drink more, which could be a big issue. But this new study starts looking at some of the mechanistic actions and why this might be happening. And it was just published as of recording here, like a month ago, April, 2021. Anyhow, let's go ahead and break it down. And after this video, I do want you to check out Thrive Market, which I talk about all the time. They're an online membership-based grocery store. So speaking of cravings, if you're ever craving something that's going to fit within the confines of your actual protocol, Thrive Market's where it's at. Keto, paleo, vegan, fasting, whatever, you name it, all categorized in a way that'll work for you. And that's why I'm a huge proponent of using them. So there's a link down below. They deliver the groceries right to your doorstep. Don't have to go to the grocery store. Saves you a bunch of time and ultimately time is money. So for me, it is very important. And then I've got all the goodness that I want and I stock my pantry full of it. So check out that link down below. Thank you Thrive Market for the continued support on this channel as well. So this study was published in the journal Science Advances and is earth shattering because they took a look at two groups of people. They took a look at standard American diet and they looked at the ketogenic diet. And for three weeks, they had them follow these protocols and they had them abstain from alcohol. Okay, so they stopped drinking. Well, it was really interesting. Okay, normally what they would do is they would have some form of like benzodiazepine intervention, right? Kind of help with the cravings or help with the withdrawal. Well, it was found that the group that did the standard American diet ended up needing 187 percent more benzodiazepine intervention, whereas the ketogenic diet group needed 39 percent less. So the ketogenic diet group had much better withdrawal symptoms than the standard American group. Well, what the heck is going on here? The proposed mechanism of action that researchers are really looking at here is neuroinflammation. A lot of what happens with cravings and with withdrawal anyway happens to be an inflammation related thing as our bodies get accustomed to things and our brains get accustomed to things, when we remove those things, it creates a bunch of chaos, okay? And that itself can actually trigger inflammation. I don't know if you've ever experienced this and I don't wanna necessarily connect the dots here because it might be, I don't wanna seem insulting to people that are struggling with any kind of, uh, you know, connection with alcohol, but if you've ever worked out a whole bunch and you're just consistently working out and then you take a few days off, sometimes you actually feel more inflamed than when you were working out, right? Well, that's because once you actually get in the habit of something, your body does a really good job of upregulating whatever transmitters and whatever systems it needs to upregulate to make that the norm. Any change can potentially trigger this inflammation response. Well, ketones themselves are anti-inflammatory. So when someone is even functional with how much they consume in the way of alcohol and then they go off of that, it can cause a good degree of neuroinflammation, that in and of itself. That's why the withdrawals hit. It's a, it's a change, right? The body has become dependent on this. Well, it turns out since ketones, beta-hydroxybutyrate, are going to blunt that inflammatory signal via nuclear factor kappa B, via uh, NLRP3 inflammasome, via various interleukin pathways, well, that could be the reason why the withdrawal symptoms are so much less because these ketones can actually cross through the blood-brain barrier and they can have an effect on what's called the microglia, which is the immune system within our actual brain, which again, a lot of this is early speculation because inflammation is a very, very intense, complicated topic. But when you look at it in the general sense, think of it like a static, okay? And the static is messing up the communication. So if our brain is already struggling to make a connection without alcohol, like it's trying to figure out how to fire, 
Well, then you factor in regular inflammation on top of that, it makes it a very messy situation. But ketones, it's not just the fact that we're abstaining from carbohydrates, it's the fact that we actually have the presence of these ketone bodies, which can cross through the blood-brain barrier and modulate inflammation within the brain, thereby improving network stability, which could be helping us out with those withdrawal symptoms. So yes, the cravings, as published in the journal Nutrients from an earlier study, but then the actual withdrawal symptoms as published in this study in Science Advances. So we have a really interesting breakthrough here. Now, the interesting thing is, this is only looking at alcohol. What about phone addiction? What about food addiction? What about all kinds of other addictions that are out there that we may be able to actually start conquering a little bit better in somewhat of a holistic fashion just by changing our dietary patterns? As always, I want you to keep it locked in here, and I encourage you to comment down below what you want to see me focus on next in the way of content surrounding this category. I'll see you tomorrow.